the police chief condemned for the disastrous response to the Uvalde school shooting has been fired. Julia Wong joins us on this story from Washington. Good morning, Julia. The chief led the city's school police force and his firing was announced at an emotionally charged school board meeting last night. Take us through that. Yeah, Hannah, so it was a very raw, very tense meeting. I mean, you can only imagine the trauma that these families have been living with. And then the fact that this meeting was held on the three-month anniversary of that massacre did not make it any easier. There were many family members and friends of victims who were at that particular meeting. And you could hear in their voices, those who spoke yesterday, who spoke last night, you could hear how much they wanted to see Pete Arredondo gone. Now there was a 10 year old who lost many friends in that shooting. Take a listen to what she had to say. I have messages for Pete Arredondo and all the law enforcement that were there that day. Turn in your badge and step down. You don't deserve to wear one. Now, Arredondo has been widely criticized for his lack of action the day of the shooting. Lawmakers say he was supposed to be the incident commander that particular day, but he never took control of the situation. And then officers waited more than 70 minutes before they confronted the gunman, time that experts say likely cost lives. Now, officers were spending their time searching for different equipment like shields and other types of barricading tools. And they also believe that the door the gunman was behind was locked, but then investigations show that it very likely was not. Now, family members also shared the pain of losing their loved ones at the meeting. Here's what they had to say. This is the best little boy I've ever known. Sweetest, biggest heart. He loves school, he loves his friends, he loves basketball, he loves gaming. He loves his brothers and his sisters. And every morning he made sure to tell me he loved me before he went to school. Arredondo had been on administrative leave since June, shortly after the shooting happened. And this firing takes effect immediately. When it was announced by the school board, there was an eruption of cheers and applause from those who were in the crowd. Now, Arredondo himself did not show up at this meeting, his lawyer saying that he had concerns for his safety, but he released a statement where he defended his actions. He said that the meeting was a unconstitutional lynching, and he also said that he's become a scapegoat for the hundreds of officers who were also on scene that day. And Julia, parents and families of the victims have been demanding accountability from police and officials for months now. They now have the chief of police who has been fired. Where's the community go next? Yeah, so definitely the community is seeing this as a victory and they want to see it continue. There have been multiple investigations that showed there were systemic failures in the response to that particular day. So the community is going to keep pushing, demanding for accountability to happen. Here are uh, some thoughts from two family members who spoke to media about what they want to see moving forward. It took them that long just to get rid of one person. So that's why I'm saying the fight's just begun. It's, there's not a whole lot to debate. It's simply a cut and dry situation. You look at someone that didn't do their job, didn't follow their protocol, their, and you simply hold them accountable. Now, as I mentioned, multiple investigations taking place. I just want to run you through them. The city of Uvalde is looking into the actions of its acting police chief. Then you have on the state level, the Texas Department of Public Safety that's also reviewing its officers. And then on the federal level, the U.S. Department of Justice is doing a review as well. Anna. Julia Wong in Washington, thank you so much.